Welcome to the Cyber Center for Biblical Studies. Hi, my name is Herb Bateman. Today we want to uh, focus attention on a book entitled The Great Christ Comet, Revealing the New Star of Bethlehem. Today we have with us to uh, review this book uh, is Lee Compson, pastor of the Milford First Brethren Church uh, in Milford, Indiana. Lee, welcome. Thanks. Glad to be here, Herb. So, um, as we think about this book, uh, tell me what the, the thesis is. What's, what's the author's big idea? Sure. Uh, Dr. Colin Nickel wrote, wrote this book. He most recently was a New Testament professor at Gordon-Conwell, and he tackles what is really one of the more puzzling mysteries of Scripture, I think. Uh, an astronomical puzzle, but also a biblical mystery. Uh, what was the Star of Bethlehem in particular? What, what was it? There are a lot of theories out there, a lot of ideas. And as the title of his book suggests, he believes it was a comet, a great comet, a comet of sig significance uh, that would have signaled the birth of Christ. Um, he says in, in his book, uh, as kind of a conclusion, he says, what the great Christ comet did in uh, 7 to 6 BC was extraordinary and merits wide telling. People of all disciplines, astronomers, theologians, historians, artists, must come to grips with its story. In an era when science is often viewed as the enemy of religion, the Christ comment suggests that science may be the best friend of religion. He says, could there be a clearer example of God's mastery over the cosmos than the celestial events that marked the birth of Christ? And that really, in a nutshell, is what his book is about, demonstrating how uh, the comet that signaled the birth of Christ was really orchestrated and ordained by God to reveal Christ's glory and also the good news of what Christ would do. Hmm. Well, how does he, how does he uh, approach this? How does this uh, book unfold as you walk through chapter by chapter? Sure. He really balances the technical aspects of astronomy and science and you know, as far as what is a comet and how, how that all works out, as well as the, the biblical evidence. And so early on, he gets into the biblical descriptions, the biblical prophecies that are, might relate to the, the Star of Bethlehem. Um, even just the, the Christmas story itself, he, he talks about that for those who may not be aware of it. And then um, he goes on to describe the major theories that, that people have come up with throughout history. You know, was it a, a planet uh, appearing? Was it a meteor shower? Was it an explosion of a star, a supernova? Um, was it uh, Halley's Comet even? Uh, was it just a, a special star? Was it even a, just a supernatural event? Um, and so he tackles all those theories, evaluates them, I think, fairly, and then um, explains why he believes uh, Comet is the best um, answer, the best solution to this puzzle. Um, how what characterizes a comet and what we know about them scientifically would best explain what is going on in the biblical story. Um, he also goes into great detail, again, very, even very technical at times, about what this comet would have done, how it would have behaved in the sky from, from Earth's vantage point, what it would have looked like. Um, and, and then he, he wraps it up and brings it all together in, in kind of a narrative. He even tells a little bit of a narrative what, what would have happened and how this would have looked like and even what happened afterwards to the major characters involved. Uh, because there are, you know, there's Joseph and Mary, there's King Herod, there are what he believes are astronomers from Babylon, the Magi, the wise men. Uh, and so he, uh, he does a, a nice job of really painting a whole picture of what would have been going on during this special time in history. Hmm. Now, as I sit here and I'm listening to you and um, explain this book and how it's unfolding, I, I sit here and I think to myself, self? This isn't a typical book that a pastor will sit down and read. So I need to ask, what spurred you on to want to read uh, such a book? Yeah, that's a very interesting question, and that's a very fair evaluation because um, this isn't a, maybe a typical pastor's book, but I found it very helpful. Uh, really, it goes back for me uh, to December of 2014. It was around Christmas time. My wife and I were visiting her family in Ohio when we were actually driving home. And all of a sudden, I think it might have been something on the radio I heard, or maybe it was something, a discussion we had with her family. I can't remember exactly, but I started getting this idea. What are the, 
the myths of Christmas that sometimes even good church-going Christians often believe and have bought into. Not, not necessarily bad things, but parts of the story maybe we assume, uh, parts of the story we don't fully understand or haven't had explained well. And um, there are in a number of different things. And so I started having my wife, as I was driving, jot down these ideas. And I was thinking of a sermon, really, is what I was going for. And then this was one of the more significant ones. What was the Star of Bethlehem? And I had this book later on um, that in 2015, I had that book kind of referred to me. I was like, oh, that, that's very interesting. This pertains to this idea I have kind of hanging over my head and, or in the back of my mind. And so I, I purchased the book and, and I read it and really in preparation for a sermon uh, to kind of, yeah, assess and figure out what was the, the Star of Bethlehem. And it, to me, it, it, it was actually while very technical and hard to read at some points, it was very encouraging because it helps give you credible answers to what was going on uh, with the, the Star of Bethlehem. And even just finding out more about the Christmas story, I, I think, gave me a better appreciation of what God was even doing back then. So the short answer is it was really, you know, in preparation for one specific sermon, but it turned out to be something I, I found myself more and more curious the more and more I got into it. So what would you say would be the most insightful thing that, you, that you've taken from this book? Um, that's that's a, a really good question. Um, I, I would, for me, it is the evidence that is, is there, scientific and biblical evidence, that God was orchestrating all of history and even this specific event to announce Christ's birth. You know, we believe supernaturally he he had his angels appear to shepherds, and that was an, an incredible event to announce the Savior's birth. But even what he was doing, the lengths he went to, uh, to really tell the entire world what was going on through this uh, appearance of the comet. Um, these uh, magi and wise men in, in Babylon, they would have had some familiarity, I believe, with the text, and that's a, a, a case that Colin Nichols Nichols makes. They would have had familiarity with the biblical prophecies because Israel at one point was in exile in Babylon. And so uh, they would have been very interested in, in the skies and astronomy, even a little bit of astrology to a religious, pagan, religious sort of extent. But the fact that God used general revelation, as us theologians call it, uh, to point people towards Christ coming to earth, uh, I, I, to me, it, it helps to have a greater appreciation of the lengths God went to to share the good news with the entire world and, and not just, you know, one little town, uh, a few little shepherds, um, or even just one country. It was the entire world. And so, yeah, I've, I've gained a greater appreciation of what, what God did, I think, in history. Hmm. Well, let me ask you this. Um, uh, is there any one particular thing you wish the author uh, may have covered? I, I mean, it seems like he's pretty thorough yeah. in, in his uh, investigation and in his writing of this uh, book. Did you come away wishing he had addressed uh, something else? I can't say there was really a, a significant thing I wish he would have covered that he didn't because it is very thorough, it is very technical. At, at some points I felt like I, I wish he could have maybe condensed it a little bit, but the science of it is very technical. Um, it is very specific, and um, a lot of it I, I honestly had to skim through. But uh, even even to that point, he did do a good job of, of bringing us back to what does this all mean? How do these puzzle pieces fit together? And what is the, the overall picture? So I can't say uh, that um, there's really anything missing because as a, a pastor, he did a, a nice job with the biblical text. And I think even scientists could appreciate the job he did in handling the scientific evidence and the scientific theories and the, the different math that's out there uh, for the physics of all of it. So um, I, I felt like he did do a, a nice job comprehensively covering the major issues with two different worlds that are very, very different. Hmm. Okay, well, let me, let me ask you this. Um, uh, you've shared how this book... Um, came to light and of interest because you were raising certain questions in your mind as you were thinking about the Christmas story. Mm -hmm. um, how might this book help other pastors? I mean, it seems like you're wired in a way that you really like the science and the, and, uh, but how might this book ha uh, be a help to um, other pastors that 
um, might be wired like you or maybe sure. wired a little differently. Sure. Yeah, I would say even if you're not wired like me, even if science and physics and astronomy doesn't uh, appeal to you at all, I think as a pastor, this will help you uh, study and, and tell the story of the birth of Christ in an even better way, in a, an even more tangible way for your audience. You can describe in a better way, with very much confidence, with a lot of biblical evidence and, and everything, what the wise men, who they were and what they did to journey to visit Christ, to celebrate the birth of this mysterious king they weren't sure about. So I, I think for any pastor, it can help us tell the story uh, of the Incarnation in an even more uh, lively and applicable and relevant way. Okay. Um, one last question. Um, do you know of any other books that are like this out there? <laughs> I don't. I don't. You know, he refers to some different works um, for a variety of things. There doesn't seem to be one book that tackles this particular subject on the Star of Bethlehem in a comprehensive way that he does. I'm sure, I'm sure there have been attempts, but none that are... Uh, that I was aware of, that I really came across in, in my research. Um, I think there, there are some, some good commentaries and, and good um, things that you can find in, in commentaries and in biblical uh, scholars that, uh, in their works that will kind of point you and support what he is telling, point you in this direction. But nothing that I have come across that is uh, covering all the bases like, like this book does. Well, Lee, thank you so much for coming and sharing with us. And and uh, uh, opening our eyes to a book that may not uh, cross our paths, that may not have uh, come across our paths. Um, thank you uh, for listening. And I, I trust that this book entitled The Great Christ Comet might be of interest to you, especially when you think about Christmas. It comes around once a year and looking for different ways of sharing this Christmas story. Perhaps this might be a book that might be of interest to you. In the meantime, I trust that you will have a, a great day. Thank you.